Yeah, episode seven, episode, episode eight. eight. Episode, episode eight. Episode eight. Welcome to episode eight of the Akashic Show. Thank you guys so much for being here, and thank you so much for pressing play. Look, have you ever wondered if people experience time the same? Maybe in your own practice, maybe in your own journey, you're starting to experience time differently. I'll share personally, I used to experience time very quickly. I used to say things like, oh, the week just flew by. And now I don't experience time in that way anymore. It never feels like the week is just flying by or time is just flying by. So I am really interested in talking to you about this experience of how we experience time. So if you want to be able to learn how to manipulate time, experience time a bit differently, you are going to absolutely love this show. Grab your pen and paper, you know, give us some hearts, give us some likes, send some of those bubbles across the screen, say what's up in the comments below. And I invite you to share this video out because I promise you we are going to blow some minds. And you know what? There may be some people that are maybe experiencing time a little quickly. They want to be able to slow it down. They'd be able to speed it up. Or maybe they're curious about the subject just like you are. And just simply by you sharing this video out, we are going to be able to shift somebody's paradigm and transform their life, their life by this information. So welcome to the show. So appreciate. I see we got some likes and some loves coming in already. I also see we got some comments coming in. So appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Now, I really love Fridays because every Friday I get to hang out with my good friend, the founder and the director here at the Akashic Academy. You know what? I've known Emily for a few years now. We've been able to connect. We've been able to work together, grow the academy, which is just growing and exponentially. We've got some cool things coming down the pipeline. Emily, it's so great to be next to you and seeing all the transformation you're causing in the world. It's an honor to be here with you once again on Friday. How are you doing today? Yeah, thank you, my friend. I'm doing good. Um, you said that we've been friends for a couple of years. Our friends anniversary, our friend anniversary. What was that last week? That was last week. That was our Facebook friend anniversary. I know. What did you get me? What did you get me for friend anniversary? My presence for two years. You're like, here's a company, Emily. Here's a company that's growing and exploding. Let me explode the right. company for you. <laughs> what you really are doing is such a it's such a dynamic pairing. I really love that um, you've come on board with me here and are teaching me all of the just the incredible knowledge that you have about growing businesses. You are, you are, you are a big reason behind why this company is exploding. Um, but it takes both of us coming together and really being open and willing to grow and try new things. And it's so cool to have a partner who's willing to jump in and uh, just like, you know, try, try outside of the box kind of things. And just this morning, we're talking about all kinds of really exciting things that are going to be going on inside of the Academy here. So we're going to share that with you guys as soon as we get to the Academy news. But first, we're going to have a little puppet show for you because it's Friday. It's time for a puppet show, yo. All right. So as you guys know, we love to share our favorite comments about what is going on with you guys and how these um, Awesome times of hanging out here together or landing with you guys. We love your comments. So keep your comments rolling in for this week as well because you just might find yourself a puppet next week if you do. Mm. All right, Coach Nick, you're going to go first today. You're going to share who sure. your favorite is. All right. Three, two, one, go. Oh, this week, my favorite comment came in from Kathy Hoymeyer. What's up, Kathy? I hope it's like looking in a mirror. It's like the puppet version of yourself. I know. Now, Kathy is really cool. Kathy's part of, uh, she's a, a member here at the Akashic Academy. Uh, she's also a show host at the Akashic Academy. So she runs a show. What's uh, Kathy's show uh, name again, Emily? Kathy's show is Nourishing Your Multidimensional Body. And she That's shares it. all different kinds of ways that we uh, can really light up our light body. And this woman has more modalities, I think, than anybody I've ever known in my life to get to get us healing. And uh, she is for sure on her path. Yeah, absolutely. So Kathy's doing awesome work. She's also got her Lake Clear Lodge and Retreat Center. So if you don't know Kathy, make sure that you find her on the page, check out her show, and check out what she's doing inside of the Academy. So thank you so much, Kathy. Nice. And I have got Bernie Ruiz here. My friend Bernie is not only an Akashic Academy member, but she is also uh, one of my new students in learning to read the Akashic Records. Bernie's comment was she was sharing that she's definitely tried to avoid some changes, but the universe has insisted 
that she go with these changes and she's learning to accept them now in her life. And I know that learning to read the records has been um, a big part of that acceptance for Bernie and really understanding why some of these changes that the universe is insisting that she go through are happening. Because so many times, right, we, we find ourselves in situations where we're like, what the heck? I don't even get it. Like, can we get mad at God for what's going on? And the records really give us that opportunity to see from that higher perspective and to understand and to really embrace everything that's going on. So I am loving working with you, my dear. It is I know it's a it's a big time of change in your life, but it's really fun to be going through this process with you. And we're glad that you're here at the Academy. Beautiful Bernie Ruiz. Yes. All right, guys. So with no further ado, let me share with you the exciting things that are going on in the Akashic Academy this week. Of course, Coach Nick is doing a webinar tomorrow. It's called The Servant's Way, and it's all about, I love this word, co-creating your reality. So many times we use the word manifest, and for me, manifest, it's like there, there's an essence to it of like heavy lifting. Like I got to like uh, use all of my energy and like focus it all on one point and I have to do it just right. And sometimes I'm really good at doing that. But I find that like when I just use the term co-creating and I kind of just relax into it a little bit, I have a lot better success. So Coach Nick, give us a, a quick little breakdown of, of what you're going to be sharing tomorrow so they can sign up and come join us. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we talk about co-creation and the servant's way, what we're really talking about is how we align ourselves with the universal energy that's happening, how we align ourselves with your creator. So that that's why it's co-creation, right? The term manifest also sometimes implies that I'm doing it. But what I'm going to be presenting tomorrow is how you can see how you don't have to do it. You can move yourself out of the way and have things unfold in your life with ease and with grace. And we're going to be talking about some specific distinctions, reality versus your story about reality. You're going to really see what stories are serving you and what's not. We're going to talk about content versus context, how to create the space uh, to create more and hold more in your life. And, uh, and I'm going to be sharing you what blocks you from doing these things. You're going to have some really distinct tools to be able to leave with and co-create some really cool stuff in your life. So after the show, I will leave the link in the uh, in the comments below so you can guys can go ahead and register up for tomorrow's uh, webinar. Yes, and Nick and I are taking this wisdom and putting it right smack into action because we are co-creating the very first retreat for the Akashic Academy. We're so excited about that. Uh, this is gonna be just an opportunity that'll really shift and change all of our lives and um, put you in the presence of the Akashic Records, teaching you how to dive into that modality, how to heal, getting out in nature, learning about um, different ways of Ayurvedic cooking. We, we, have, we have a lot of things that we are planning in this retreat, and so excited to get that co-created and out there into the planet. So fun, it's another reason why it's so fun working with you, my friend, because uh. it's fun to do stuff like that. And of course, I wanna give a shout out to Laura Murano. My girl, Lala, who is finishing up her internship in learning to read the Akashic Records. She is also a massage therapist, and I believe she does Reiki as well. And she's really combining all of these different healing techniques to create very powerful impact for her clients. And um, she's just had a life transforming experience learning to read her Akashic Records and doing that for other people as well. And she's really good at it. And uh, I'm super proud of her. So Lala, I wanted to give you a shout out, tell you a big congratulations. And uh, I'm really proud of you, my friend. It's been my pleasure to get to know you and to work with you. And uh, I look forward to supporting you as you go out and shift the world with all of these amazing skills that you have. And now jumping into our topic, look, William left us this great comment. He said, I manipulate time. Emily, if you read my messages, this is a psychic moment. I wrote about, I wrote you about time manipulation. William, I haven't even read the message yet, which makes it even more of a psychic moment because this was actually Nick's idea to talk about this today. So Coach Nick is definitely getting the, the telepathic messages out there um, of what you guys want to talk about and what you want to share about. William, tell us in the comments about your experience manipulating time and how you do it. And Coach Nick, bring us into this conversation. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, I was uh, inspired this morning to talk about this conversation at time. You know, sometimes I hear people saying things like, oh, the week just flew by or where did time go? Or, geez, what are we going to, you know, uh, I, 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 things are just going by so fast. And I think that's a, a, a little bit sad. Um, you know, it may not be. But uh, for me, I'm thinking, why are we why are we experiencing time? 
time so quickly. And I, that's why I wanted to talk about it because your life is precious. You've got a very precious moment right now. And if you're experiencing quickly or it feels like it's just flying by, I don't want you to go to your deathbed thinking, oh, well, it just flew by. But rather really, uh, really getting uh, into life and slowing it down. So how do you manipulate time? Well, the first thing that we got to understand is that time is experienced differently because time is relevant. So for instance, on different planetary systems, time is experienced differently. It says on Brahma Loka, Brahma Loka being the top planet in this universal planet, that what six months is one day in on Brahma Loka, right? So on different planetary systems, we know that time is different. We know that even in our own solar system, different planets, one day for Jupiter is yeah. different than one day on Earth, which is different than one day on Venus. So time is relevant. Time, even here on planet Earth, is experienced differently by different people, right? It's known that when you're standing next to the Great Pyramids, that time has been said to slow down, right? Time slows down from an internal experience as you draw closer to the source of reality. As you become more and more in tune with the reality and source, you become in tune with the ever eternal now. Because now is all there is. And as you live in the moment of now, so you stop living from the mental plane of the possible future or the mental plane of the what happened in the past, and you begin to live now, you will experience time eternally because you are touching the eternal now. And time for you will slow down. And as time slows down, it will feel like you are like, slowing things down. It will feel like everything is moving a bit slower for you, but in actuality, you will also be speeding up in a way because you will find that your ability to co-create with the universe becomes more precise when you're in the eternal now. And this is how you begin to manipulate the experience you're having of time because you got to know that time in itself is not real. Mm -hmm. Time is, we're trying to, the body is trapped in this thing called time, but it is just an experience and it is not a real thing. There is only the ever eternal now. What are your it. thoughts on this? Well, I, ha I have a lot of things that I want to say, just like lots of things running through my mind right now. First of all, this can be a very mind boggling experience. Like you have to get out of the construct of how you experience time to really dive into this conversation. So one of the ways that it's super easy to see this playing out is some of the comments that I flashed up on the screen there. My mama, who is in St. Louis, it was 11-11 a few minutes ago where she was. Kathy Hoymeyer, who got herself a puppet today. Kathy's in the Adirondacks. She was like, hey, it's 12-12 here. Yes, here comes Kathy. So <laughs> even as we're all sitting here in this space together, we're experiencing different portals of time. And those of you guys who are into numerology and into uh, specifically Joanne's sacred angel scribe numbers, if you just if you ever see, are seeing numbers over and over and you just Google Joanne's angel numbers and type in that number, it's going to give you the energetic frequency um extrapolation of what those different times mean. So right here, all in the same and within the same moment, we're experiencing the 1111 portal, the 1212 portal. So it's all happening, even though we're all on the same planet, there are different portals of time that are opening. So that can start to start to unbreak those places where your mind gets all chained up trying to figure out exactly how time works. Another thing that I want to share with you guys is there's a book that's full of short stories called Einstein's Dreams, which is a really fun book to read. And they talk about in fictional stories, short little stories, different ways that time is running. So you go to this, you go to the one village and you're reading a story and they talk about how time runs cyclically, meaning in a circle, right? They're they go take you to another village where time is actually running backwards. And this was a really powerful book, even though I read it just for entertainment purposes, maybe 20 years ago, it really started to allow me to unravel that construction of time that keeps us so 
you know, feeling that time only happens in a very linear fashion. So if you're if you need some tools to help you break outside of the mold of, of how linear time works for human beings, these are some tools that you guys can use to um, begin to like start allowing your mind to not be so like chained up, not so locked up, not so in prison to the way human beings experience time. I was watching um, some some videos on YouTube of other uh, just profound energy speakers and people who channeled specific entities from other different places in the galaxy. And they were talking about how and I was getting information, too. I've got a lot of stuff going on in my in my own personal zone this week about new guides coming in and sharing information with me and how they explained that time works in the in in the grander scheme and in, in these beings who are not locked into linear time is that they say time is like a dewey decimal system in the library where if you're looking for a particular book remember you go to the card catalog and you pull it out and you get the number and the dewey decimal system basically tells you where to go in the library to find that book Time is a stamp that tells beings where to find a particular experience in this whole universal continuum that, mm. that, that we're all kind of in at the same time here. So if you can begin to think about time as like a, a stamp that tells you where to go to find a particular experience, that's going to start helping you unlock these areas where we get all imprisoned to how we're experiencing life because how we're experiencing it is not anywhere near the totality of what is going on on the planet. And in order to really grow spiritually, you got to start breaking down some of those constructs that, that we're experiencing. Um, I also had an experience myself when I was learning to read the Akashic Records about past lives and trying to figure out like, well, because my teacher had said that she, someone had told her that she was the Buddha once in a past life. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Why don't you tell everybody that you were the Buddha? And she was really kind of nonchalant about the whole thing. And she trained us to anytime we had questions about, you know, issues or things coming up, instead of asking her first to go in and ask the records. So I went in and asked the records about this idea of reincarnation. And if, if any of us were the Buddha or Jesus or Krishna or like a Napoleon or any of these, you know, big figures, how do we know that? And how do we know if that's true or not? And so the answer that I got was, actually, time it isn't running linearly like we think. It's running forwards and backwards and all at once, all at the same time. And if you look at d these different roles, these different archetypes as characters in a play, it's like they're always casting a play. They always need a Jesus and they always need a Buddha and they always need a Mother Mary. So all of us have actually been through the process of playing all of these different archetypes. And um, I found that that really interesting, too. That really helped me to start melting the ideas of how time had really gotten me locked into oh, this is how time works and this is how we're plugging along. So those are the thoughts that I wanted to share today about time. Um, let's go through and see what some of you guys are, are experiencing here. Beck says she's been having fun with the concept of jumping timelines, rewriting past events. It is a giant playground. Yes, awesome. A of, uh, hey, Miko, just a, a lot of yeah. people, like when you think about your past and you think, oh, I've never, you know, maybe I didn't receive, I didn't receive the love I needed to receive as a child, or I didn't, you know, do this, or I didn't do that as a child. You actually have the possibility of rewriting your past timeline by using uh, by using conscious memory creation. So Ooh. one of the things you can do is, for instance, you could picture like your mother really caressing or holding you as a baby and giving you that love in your experience. And even though it may have not happened in that physical reality, it happened in the possibility realm. Meaning, you can actually create it for yourself so that you could, in your childhood years receive the love that you needed to receive for the de de developmental process and that will affect your life here and now so if if you're thinking if you're thinking if in, you have a little voice in your head that says i didn't get something that i needed in my past you can actually recreate that experience in your own consciousness for your own development here and now yeah and that is um that's coming from Nick's experience. And you guys know that we, we kind of come at things a little bit differently. He brings his bhakti yoga and his life experience to the table. The Akashic records are the place that I go to get all of my information. But that is exactly synchronous with what 
um, I've learned from the Akashic Records is that, and we'll, we'll do a little process today, guys. We'll, we'll, we, we will actually go back in time together. And when we shift things that happened in our past, it has a ripple effect. It's like throwing a stone in a pond and it ripples, those ripples move through the lake, right? Or the pond. Since we're throwing it in the pond, it's still going to happen in the pond, right? Um, as the ripples move through, that is actually a shift in energy in your past, your present, and your future. Okay, so it shifts. It has a ripple effect that it moves all throughout all of the different layers of time as we experience it. Um, I also like William's comment here about the reincarnational lives are being lived now. I was sharing with Nick yesterday because I told you guys I've been like there's been a lot going on in in my world that. For the past 36, 48 hours now, I literally have had to be very silent and very still and just stay very present in the now moment because there's just some shifting and things happening within me. And Nick was saying, oh, well, you're reincarnating right now. And I thought, oh, I guess I am. That's that's pretty cool. And I like that William's comment um, was was bringing attention to he experiences that as well, that he we're reincarnating in every moment in the now and being here together. So guys, let's do just a quick little process and give you all the experience of shifting your current reality by moving back in time. And I want you to go ahead and as we're just starting to breathe here, let's all get our breath in sync. Start to think about an area of your childhood where something didn't go top quality for you, all right? Either you didn't get the love that you felt like you needed or you didn't get to have the experiences that, that you felt like were important to you. Areas where you might have felt left out of your friend group. Whatever, whatever those pains are from your childhood, let's just allow yourself to go ahead and find a safe space to bring those up to the forefront of your mind right now. And whatever situation is coming up for you, don't force it. If, if a situation is coming up for you that maybe doesn't match that protocol that I just shared, I want you to trust whatever is coming up. And I want you to allow yourself to visually experience, experience with your feelings, experience with the sounds, experience with, you know, if you feel the wind on your face, if what's happening outside, where wherever you are in this moment in time, just gathering up as many sensory perceptions to take you back to that space as you can. And then I want you to just to add light to the situation. So just imagine the scene that you're seeing and experiencing and feeling right now, just adding light, white light, white light, and allowing it to get brighter and brighter and brighter with the intention that this white light is healing that this light carries the, the higher levels of information that maybe you didn't understand as a child that would make it easy for you to forgive and to release. So just see the situation getting brighter and brighter and brighter until eventually all you see in your, in your visionary field is flooded with bright white light. And setting the intention that this is actually healing that moment for you it's having a healing effect forward and backward through time as we experience linear time. And then honoring yourself for, for being a being that can manipulate time in this way and can shift your experiences just by using your energy, your energetic field, just by learning about how your energy works, how your intention works. Give yourself that that pat on the back, honoring yourself for being a being who can shift things in your life. And take one more deep breath. And then releasing the exercise. Allow yourself to come back into the now moment, into the room that you're in. And notice if the room doesn't actually seem brighter where you are. Right? It's, it's, not, it's not a necessary thing for the room to seem brighter, but a lot of times when we go back and do this kind of work, it does look, it does look a lot brighter when we, come, when we come back into our space. So welcome back, everybody. Thank you. How are you feeling, Coach Nick? Feeling nice. Yeah, how are you guys feeling out there? We've got some hellos coming in. Hi, Wendy. Rhonda says, yes. Natalie Wilson is here. Hi, Natalie. Glad you guys are all joining us here today. Stacy says yes. Awesome. All right, Coach Nick. 
Fantastic. I think the big I, yeah yeah. I think the big <laughs> takeaway here is that um, you can you can experience time differently if you want. So if you feel like things may just be flying by, your life may just be flying by, and you want to slow down that experience and really enjoy life at a different level, then train your mind to be a little quieter. As you train your mind to be a little bit quieter and you're able to live in the present moment, then time will start to slow down for you. Mm -hmm. And your life will no longer feel like Oh, time is just flying by. And be conscious of the words. When you say things like, I don't have time, time is just flying by, where did the time go? You're creating that experience for yourself. The truth is, is all you have is time. That's actually the only thing you really have is some time. So how you use your time is so important. Slow down your experience of time by becoming more present. And you will find that in your practical day-to-day -day life, you'll be able to accomplish so much in a day and you will still have time and you'll still have time. There's always time. It's just you need to learn how to experience it in a way that's beneficial. Emily, you got some final th thoughts before we uh, take a stance or we... Oh, I was just, just going to lead us into taking a stance. Okay, I'm, ready. I'm, I'm ready to take my stance for today. All right, so uh, the question is, and we want to hear from you guys with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, uh, can you experience time differently? Thumbs up for a yes or thumbs down for a no? So three, two, one. Yes. Absolutely. I, yeah, I love experiencing time differently. I always, when I was a, a kid, I was thinking, I wonder if everybody experiences color the same. Because we label a particular wavelength or frequency of color as blue, but is it act, is what I see is blue, what you see is blue? And that used to always bend my mind in an interesting way when I was sitting in science class and Mr. Hunter was talking over my head about physics or whatever, I'd go to that. So it's interesting to apply it to time as well and to begin to start thinking, okay, I wonder if we can actually experience time in, in those different ways. So if you're interested, check out that book that I said, Einstein's Dreams is the name of it. Um, and reading is a really great way just to like focus you present in the moment. If you, I know that a lot of times when, as we get older, we don't actually sit down and read quite as much. So if you're new to this idea of meditating and, and figuring out ways just to get you very present in the moment, that's, that's a simple, simple, simple way that you can begin to focus your energy and be more present, not allow your mind to go too far in the future about the bills you have to pay or too far in the past about that person you were fighting with on Facebook the other day or whatever's going on in your life, just really focusing on the present moment. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us on this Friday talking about time. If you guys experience a manipulation of time as you're going throughout this week, if you try these things or um, if you notice that you have some ideas that are outside of the box when it comes to how we experience time, I invite you guys leave messages, leave posts on the page. Um, let's get really interactive here in this space and, and really create this community where we can learn and grow together. And of course, if you're ready to take things to an even deeper level in your life, become a member of the Akashic Academy. Inside the Academy for $11.11 .11 a month, we do weekly workshops. And by workshops, I mean we teach a little bit and then we take you through an experience that actually allows you to shift and change and grow. We're not just talking at you as we go throughout the week. Nick teaches once a week. I teach once a week. So that's eight new workshops every single every single month that you have access to with your $11.11. .11. It's the one of the biggest values on the planet. I don't know where you can show up to get that level of mentorship for that price. And we also do new moon and full moon um, ceremonies every single month to help you really get clear on the things that you need to release and also to get clear on what it is that you want to create. What do you want to experience with the time you have here on the planet? So joining with the community that is all about doing that will shift and change you. I don't know, faster than just about anything else, anything else going here. So we invite you guys, if you if you feel like that is something that resonates with you, reach out to me, reach out to Coach Nick, send us a private message, and we will get you guys enrolled. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow for The Servant's Way, right?
That's right. And, uh, and of course, this, this Sunday, we have three shows. Sunday's a big day at the Academy. So tune in for spirit sessions in the morning. Kathy Hoymeyer's show. Let's see, let's see Kathy one more time, Coach Nick. Kathy's show comes on right after spirit session, ladies. And then we have Janelle Cameron in the afternoon um, sharing with us about the energy forecast coming for the week. So we'll see you guys soon. Have a good rest of your day.